Welcome to the review session uh, for Cambridge Nursing Academy. My name is Cynthia Dixon. I'm the RN program coordinator for both campuses, Hyattsville and Gettysburg. So as far as the GNE exam is concerned, it encompasses a two examination. There is a written portion, which is two hours long, 70 questions, objectives. And then there is a skill portion. We have to master 22 skills. However, when you come in, each candidate gets five skills. The first skill you all have in common is hand washing skill. For the day of the exam, you're gonna be wearing scrubs, your school uniforms, that is. You would also bring three number two pencils uh, already sharpened, okay? Three of these already sharpened. You would also bring a pen with you. Uh, you would also bring two identifications with you. Uh, one of the identification, however, has to be a picture ID. So for instance, your state ID and a debit card, your driver's license and a debit card or a credit card, your social security card and a debit card with a picture on it, or your passport and your social security card. Uh, all those forms of IDs would be acceptable, except Again, to re-emphasize, one of those IDs have to have a picture of you uh, on it. You would also get a letter from Credential telling you when your exam will be and also when to report here and the location of the exam. Bring that confirmation letter with you as well. Uh, so again, good luck, keep practicing. We anticipate you successfully doing the examination and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much for your time. So good morning class. Good morning again. Like I said earlier, I'm going to repeat some of the things I went over with you. And once again, congratulations for qualifying for your GNA uh, exam. Like we said earlier, as far as the GNA is concerned, it applies to all 50 states, all right? So wherever you are in the US, if you wanna do the GNA exam, you have to go through the same process as everybody else. As far as today is concerned, I'm the program coordinator for Cambridge Nursing Academy. Uh, most of you know me as Miss Cynthia, but my full name is Cynthia Dixon, all right? I'm going to be practicing or teaching you the GNA exam for skills 1 to skill 22. And the skill 1 is always going to start with hand washing. We said the day of our GNA exam, we are wearing our scrubs, also known as our school uniform. When you report here, there are some things you need to bring with you. You need to bring two number two pencils sharpened. You need to bring two IDs. You also need to bring your uh, letter that you got from Credential, okay, which the examiner is going to check you in with. The first exam each and uh, everyone will be doing with is the written exam. The written exam, we said, comprises of 70 questions, objectives. You are shading on a scantron. If you finish the exam, the written exam, before the two hours, you can simply walk to the examiner's desk, hand them your examination booklet, and also hand them your uh, answer key. Okay. Once everyone has completed the exam, the examiner is going to go to the front desk and fax your answer sheets to be graded in Pennsylvania. Okay. She, he or she, meaning the examination uh, RN, might not give you the results at the end of the written exam. She might hold on to your written results until the completion of your skills evaluation. Because for most candidates, once they get their written results, if it goes one way or the other, it might affect their skills evaluation, all right? So my point is just because the examiner doesn't give you your written results does not mean you failed the written exam, okay? So, I'm going to start uh, with hand washing. When you first come in, and like I said earlier, you could be writing notes as I go along. If you have any questions, please feel free to jot it down on your 
uh, sheets and then after the completion, if I'm not able to answer those questions, you can still ask them. Okay. So today we're going to be using Ms. Nafisa to be the uh, resident or the patient here. I'm going to be acting as you. Okay. So I'm going to be pretending I'm a CNA in order to demonstrate all the 20 skills uh, for you today. All right. So I go. The examiner is over there watching me. The examiner is going to have an evaluation pamphlet where they are grading you according to the steps that you would be doing. We said for the skills, there are some steps in different skills where we consider those steps critical elements. If you take any skill and you have a step that is in bold, if you do not perform that step that's in bold correctly, or you do not perform that step at all, unfortunately, we will not be successful for the GNA exam. In order for you to become a GNA that day, you have to completely, successfully do your written exam and successfully do your skills exam. When you pass both written and skills, then the results will be sent to Board of Nursing and Board of Nursing will then upgrade your CNA license and henceforth, when you look up yourself on Board of Nursing's uh, registry, your name will come up and it will say CNA slash GNA with your license uh, number, of course, all right? So I'll start with hand washing. This is what you would do the day of your GNA exam once again. Hi, Ms. Nafisa, my name is Cynthia. I'm gonna be your CNA for today and I'm going to wash my hands. I'll be right with you, okay? So I'll be stepping up. Every time you step out of the examination room, the examiner would also follow you with their clipboard. They will not be speaking with you. If you make a mistake, we would only find out at the end of the exam that we passed or we did not successfully pass the exam, all right? So you stay here and I will be right back. When you get to the hand washing station, all right, if you have long sleeves like myself, this is what you would do. The first thing you would do is to rinse the areas you will be washing, which is your hands and your wrist. Okay. Once you rinse your hand and your wrist, you want to point your fingers down to the sink and you're supposed to be demonstrating the friction part for at least 20 seconds. So this is what you'll be doing. Okay. Once you're done washing your hands for 20 seconds, you rinse in between your fingers, interlacing your fingers, your wrists. As well. Once I finish rinsing, I get two paper towels and I dry from my fingertip to my hand and my wrist. Do not forget to dry from your fingertip to your wrist. You discard your paper towel, you take another paper towel and you turn your faucet off. That completes hand washing skill. The next skill we have here, it says on page 24, it says uh, skill two applies one knee high elastic stockings, all right? So if you have one knee high elastic stockings after you've completed hand washing, you close the door for privacy, you go back to your patient, this is what you would then say to your patient. Ms. Navisa, this is Cynthia again. I'm here to apply one knee high elastic stockings. Is that okay with you? I'll be right back. 
Like we said earlier, the examiner is responsible for making sure you have all the equipment needed for the skill. So this is one in high elastic stockings. I'm going to be standing by the door so that you will completely see what I will be doing. All right. We said we were wearing our scrubs for our GNA exam. So if your classmate has socks, you're gonna take the socks off. You cannot put knee high elastic stockings on any clothing item. If it's still cold, like for instance, you're doing the exam in the winter and the patient or your classmate is wearing uh, tights underneath their scrubs, then you would also move that out of the way. All right, so watch and learn. To apply knee-high elastic stockings, there is a specific instructions in doing this correctly. When you take elastic stockings, it has this hole at the end of it. The skill says, fold the elastic stockings at least to the heel before you put the stockings on the foot and then on the leg, all right? So this is what you would do. You're gonna gather the stockings. This is the heel of the stockings all the way to the heel and fold it onto itself. If we do not perform the skill correctly, we would not be successful, all right? Uh, so this is how to fold the elastic stockings. Then this is what you would do. The skill also says, put the stockings on without leaving any folds, okay? So as you can tell, putting the elastic stockings on requires a little bit of effort. Once the stockings is on the client's toes and foot, you can build momentum and for the wrinkles that is here, I do not want you to pull the stockings all the way up and come back and use your fingers to fetch the wrinkles, but rather you take your wrinkles with you, okay? Sometimes when you put elastic stockings on your classmate, there might be wrinkles underneath the patient's uh, leg. That may not be obvious to you, but it would be obvious to the uh, evaluator. So you want to make sure you lift the leg up and completely get rid of your wrinkles. Okay. Once that's done, you cover your patient. And for our GNA, anytime we are dealing with a human being, you have three post skills, which is, Mr. Fisa, this is your cold light. I will bring my whole bed down and you tell the examiner, I'm going to wash my hands, okay? Once you finish your first skill, which is hand washing, subsequently, you simply tell the examiner you're going to wash your hands and get credit. If you do not tell the examiner you are going to wash your hands after completion of a skill, we've missed what? A step, okay? Every time you finish a skill, you are supposed to tell the examiner, I'm going to wash my hands, all right? That signals to the examiner that you're done with the skill and you are now moving on to the what? Next skill, all right? So let's go to our next skill over here. So this is our g &E exam. As we know, when it comes to the actual exam, there will be no breaks. You have 25 minutes to complete all five skills. It does not mean that each skill will take you five minutes. When the examiner starts the exam, okay, and give you your exam pamphlet, you use the 25 minutes as you choose, okay? Most of you, if you've been following the protocol, and you start practicing, which most of you have started practicing already, and practice religiously. As far as Cambridge are concerned, most uh, GNA candidates finish the exam in 13 minutes, 15 minutes, because you're doing the exam with 
your classmates, you're doing it at your school. So you know where the equipments are. You would use the same equipments to practice over and over again. You're not going to a regional site where you're searching for the equipments, okay? Because you don't know where they keep uh, the lotion on the cart, so on and so forth. So on that note, to help everyone, uh, as far as your classmates are concerned, when you're practicing, there's a reason why we've arranged the equipments the way they are in different bins. When you use soap, try your best to return it back to this bin. When you use, you know, lotion, return it back to the same bin. Uh, gloves, toilet paper, so on and so forth. So people are not all over the place searching for emesis basin and as such, okay? Those are some tips that will help all of us do this exam successfully. All right. so. Again, I will continue. So let's say you come in the day off and you have embolate clients using a transfer belt. This is what you would do once again. Go to your client. Hi, Miss Nafisa. I'm here to walk you. Is that okay with you? I'll be right back. Write this down, guys. For embolating the clients, your equipment is the client's shoes and you would also need a transfer belt, okay? The examiner is responsible for telling you how far to walk the patient. As far as this room is concerned, the examiner may ask you to walk your client or your patient all the way to this desk, but whatever they ask you to do, they ask you to walk the client to their door, then that's what we would do, all right? So there you go. Tell the uh, examiner, I've locked the bed to a safety position and I've brought my bed to a safe level, all right? Gate belt is my equipment. I get my gate belt. The shoes are right there for you. Same thing, front fold neatly to the foot of the bed, okay? Support your patient abdo abdomen once again. Okay, go behind their knees and bring them to the edge of the bed, okay? Once you bring your patient to the edge of the bed, you take your gate belt. We said when we are putting gate belts on our clients, the key word is to make sure it's snugly, okay? SS belt goes inside, tapped in, okay? Without your client's feet touching the floor, you will put their shoes on. Okay, and now tell them to scoop to the edge of the bed, okay? Same thing, like transferring clients, like weighing clients, all right? And you give your patient instructions on the count of three, we will stand, all right? And we walk in to the cart. One, two, three, please stand. Good. Now you can let me go. Right. When you walk in your clients during ambulation, the skill says walk a little bit behind them and a little bit beside them. So do not touch their arms, all right? Watch and learn. If you are the patient, you are going to be walking at a normal pace. Do not really act like a patient where you are walking slow. Not too fast and not too slow, all right? This is what you're doing, holding the back of the gate belt. Okay. Now, Mr. Fisa, can we turn around? You turn with your clients and you can see where my hands are going. We're gonna go back to bed. Assist your patient back to bed. Go back, please. Good job. Now take her shoes off or his shoes off before you return your patient to the bed. Mr. Fisa, this is your call light. Okay, if you need me, don't hesitate to call me. My bed is in the lowest position and I'm going to wash my hands. You are done with embolate the clients, okay? 
finesse peel. We will be doing this on page 26 here for assist with the use of a bed pan. Assist with the use of a bed pan is a very long uh, scale. It has 17 steps. It can be a little bit tricky, uh, so please pay attention. Before I start the skills, however, let's write the equipment we will need for this skill. So you're gonna need a bed pan. Okay, I'll write that down. You're gonna need uh, two pairs of gloves, toilet paper, and hand wipes. Okay, for this skill. So I've come to my GNA exam. I look on my skill phone that the examiner has given me and I see a give bed pan. Okay, this is what you would do. You go to your same patient again. Ms. Navisa, now I'm here to give you your bed pan. Is that okay with you? I'll be right back. Okay, so to gather your equipment, I'm gonna put a pair of gloves on. If you're paying attention, you will notice that there are some skills that I'll be wearing gloves and there are some skills that is not required for you to wear gloves. So as I do the demonstration, if I do a skill that doesn't require gloves, that means you're not required to do what? Wear gloves for that skill, all right? So you glove up and take your equipment. I have my bed pan, I have the toilet paper, and I have the hand wipes, okay? I would also bring a second pair of gloves for this. As soon as I bring my equipment here, again, the examiner is sitting there watching me, okay? The first thing I will do is I'll touch the head of the bed and I'll tell the examiner I'm bringing the head of the bed down, okay? My bed is locked and it's in the safest position, okay? You're gonna give your patient instructions over here. For bed pan, you have to build a tent because we are pretending the patient was not dressed up, all right? When you are putting a bed pan under a patient, there's a critical element. The flat side of the bed pan goes to the head of the bed, all right? The examiner is gonna be watching that. So this side of the bed pan is what's going to the head of the bed, all right? This is the instructions you give to your uh, patient. Ms. Navisa, can you dig your heels into the mattress and lift your buttocks up, okay? You build a tent like this, and then you put the bed pan under the patient like that. Now, can you bring your legs down? Once the bed pan is under your patient, this is the part that gets a little bit tricky. Once you've administered the bed pan, your next step is you would unglove into the trash bin. As healthcare professionals, every time we take gloves off, you are required to tell the examiner, I'm going to wash my hands, all right? So you say that. The next thing you do is to bring the head of the bed up to the farthest position, all right? So, the examiner is watching me. I raise the head of the bed up to a certain position. Okay. We said this skill has about 17 steps. Once the head of the bed is up, this is the next step you would give to your patient. Miss Nafisa, when you finish, just tear a little bit of the toilet paper, wipe yourself, go between your legs and put it in the bed pan. Once you finish wiping yourself, wipe your hands and then call me, all right? So go ahead and do that. Once you've given the patient these instructions, your next step is to glove up again. Yes. <laughs> Into the bed pan, please. Good job. 
when your patient calls you with your glove hands, you would bring the head of the bed down before you remove the bed pan. To remove the bed pan, we're using the same steps, okay? You're gonna make a tent of your top sheet. Ask your patient to dig their heels in and you remove the bed pan as such, all right? Cover your patient now. You're going out and you're gonna empty the contents of the bed pan into the toilet. We said every time we go out, who comes with that? The examiner, all right? So you can stay here, I would show you this again later. Empty the contents of the bed pan into the toilet. Rinse the bed pan into the toilet. You put your bed pan in the designated dirty supply area. Take your glass off and tell the examiner I'm going to wash my hands. Then you go back to the examination room. Once you come back to the examination room, like we said earlier, whether the examiner walks before you or behind you, you are responsible for providing what? Privacy, all right? So you close the door for privacy. I come back, I've washed my hands, and I get rid of my equipment. Back to the cart, okay? As far as uh, placing the call lights within reach, you can have two techniques. You can either place the call lights beside the patient and ask them to call you if they need you. If you decide to use the overhead table for your call light, then you have to bring it down to within reach. Okay, so you can place your call light here and say, Miss Nafisa, if you need me, do not hesitate to call me, okay? That brings me to the end of uh, offering a bed time to your patient or resident. I'm also gonna be demonstrating denture care. If you have denture care and you get to this station, this is what you would do. Make sure there is space between your body and the sink, okay? The first thing you do is to glove up. Then we take two paper towels and line the sink. You turn, your hot and cold water on, and you remove the dentures from the denture cup. Pour the water out of the denture cup and rinse the denture cup. Once you do that, you will get fresh water. Now, to brush the dentures, wet your toothbrush and apply toothpaste. Before you brush dentures, you would always rinse it first. The examiner will be watching you. Okay. And once you rinse it, you will completely brush the entire dentures, all the surfaces of the dentures. So this is a very simple scale that we do in real life when we are taking care of our patients who wear dentures, okay? After you finish washing and rinsing the dentures, you would store the denture back in the denture cup, rinse your toothbrush, and rinse the lid of the denture cup. All these are steps. It's all. Squeeze the water out of your paper towels. Take your gloves off and simply tell the examiner, I would wash my hands. That completes their 
demonstration for dentures. Let's go to scale six, which is counts and records radial pulse, right? This is one of the skills that may be a little bit difficult for you, not because it's difficult. I'm going to be very honest with you, right? It's not easy for you to be demonstrating the skill for an expert, basically, and not going to be watching you. So you might be a little bit nervous when you are demonstrating any of the skills you're doing with the RN, but rest assured that that's normal. All right. So if you're a little bit nervous, don't be so hard on yourself. Oh, why am I so nervous? Just try your best uh, to keep your cool in order for you to be successful for blood pressure, for pulse, for measuring urinary output, for weighing the client. OK, all those skills you'll be doing with the examiner. So again, this is my GNA exam. I look on the scale form and it says measure and record respiration or in this case pulse. This is what you would do. All right. Go to your patient again. Miss Nafisa, I'm here to measure and record your pulse. Is that okay with you? Very good. Thank you. So the examiner is going to get up and come to the bedside. And this is what you do. They are just here to watch you. Okay, they're not responsible for bringing the equipment. We said the equipment for this scale, write it down as well. It's a clock with a second hand. So I'm simply going to pretend I'm doing this scale with the examiner, okay? When you place the clock on your classmate, okay, uh, chest, you will simply assess for the pulse. When we are taking pulse, we said we would assess the pulse first, meaning once you find the pulse, whatever number you started on where the second hand is, you would keep counting the pulse in your head until it comes back to that number and you will say stop, wash your hands and record. All right. So I'm going to be starting at five. Stop. Okay. Cover your patient. Put your equipment back where you found it. I tell the examiner I'm going to wash my hands and the recording sheet. Okay. I would record what I got for the skills. So I got 68 and I'll hand the recording sheets to the examiner. That is how we do count and record our pulse rate. The next skill we have here is skill seven, which is counts and record what respiration. The equipment hyphen and write clock as well. So this is my GNA. I look on the scale form and let's say it says counts and record respiration rate. This is what you do again. Hi, Ms. Nafisa. This is Cynthia. I'm now here to count your respiration. Is that okay with you? Very good. You take your clock. Pulse is similar to respiration in the sense that you're using the same equipment, number one, and number two, you're going to be doing this scale with the examiner. For our GNA exams, I just listed the five recording skills we have on the exam. Out of the 22 skills, five of them are recording skills. If you get one recording skill, you will not get the others. Okay. 
So you are either going to be getting blood pressure, pulse or respiration or urinary output or measure the weight of the client. Everybody is entitled to get only what one recording skill, all right? I just happen to be demonstrating or will be demonstrating all five for you. So there we have it. The examiner is up and I have my clock on the patient. Same instructions, you tell the examiner, pick a number where the second hand is going and ask the examiner that when it gets to that number, you will start counting. If you are the patient to make sure that your classmate can actually see you breathing, once your classmate says start, you can start breathing uh, for them so that it will be very visible, okay, as far as your breath is concerned. What are we doing when we are counting respiration? We're counting one inhalation, one expiration equals what? One, one okay, one respiration. So inhalation, expiration equals one respiration. All right, I'm going to start counting at three. Start. Stop. Same thing. Put my equipment away. Tell the examiner I'm going to wash my hands and for respiration, come to my recording sheet and put 16 and hand it to the examiner. My bed is in the lowest position. Ms. Napisa, this is your call light. If you need me, do not hesitate to call me. All right. That brings me to the completion of counting and recording respiration. All right, let's go to PPE, donning and removing PPEs. Okay. As you know, as healthcare professionals, if we're working with any patients or residents, who have any contagious diseases, we are responsible for wearing barriers, okay, personal protective equipment. So that's why this is on there. If you come for your GNA exam, you look on your skill form and it says, don't on PPEs, this is what you would uh, do, all right? So the glove is, uh, box of glove is provided for you, and then the gown, the isolation gown, which is yellow, is also provided for you. Okay. So when you take it, you are simply going to be putting the uh, personal protective equipment on your uniform. You're demonstrating it to the examiner. Okay. So let me move this here. It can be tricky, so I'm going to show you some easy ways to get this done, especially ladies, if you have long hair, okay, I have my hair in a ponytail, which would be a good idea for you to do, or in braids when you are coming, if you have long hair, to tie your hair up so it doesn't get caught up in this. So in advance, this is the easiest way to put it on, okay? You can tie the neck, just use an educated guess as to the size of your head, all right? You tie this in advance instead of putting it on and trying to tie it. Okay. So you see? All right. Okay. So this is what we want. Okay. The skill set it has to overlap. Okay, when you are doing the back, it has to overlap on your back 
So this is what I would do to make sure that it's overlapping. Okay, when you get here, you're gonna turn your back to the examiner just like I did. So even if you come to school, you can use the nightgown to practice this, okay? So, okay. Then it also said for you to don on gloves, all right? Watch and learn. We've been putting on gloves throughout the, you know, demonstration, but in this case, it has to cover the sleeve of your gown, your isolation gown, that is. So try to tuck this in. This is your GNA. I'm not doing anything to fail this exam, all right? Because if you just put it on, and you do not tuck it in like this, depending on the size of your hand, can this slip off? Mm -hmm. Yes, and the examiner, we said, it's not saying anything to you. The only time we will know we didn't make it for the GNA is at the end of the exam, all right? So make sure you did what I just did. Now that she sees I've done this correctly, turning around for her or him to see it, the next thing is that it says for you to remove it, okay? So again, you've seen me taking gloves off the whole day, right? There is a technique. The inside of a glove is considered clean, okay? So that's how you take it off. Then you take the neck off, hopefully. This will be easy the way I wanted it. Okay, the back, you saw what I did to see it. Okay, you can turn it around like I just did. The other thing they testing us on is for us not to touch the outside of it. Okay, so if you see what I did, then you can peel it off. The inside of it is considered what? Clean, mm. okay? That's all. And then in here, and I'm going to wash my hands. You are done. We'll be doing scale nine, dress clients with affected weak right arm. How many steps does this scale has? It has 11 steps, all right? For dress clients with affected weak right arm, the examiner is gonna, again, set the scale up by putting a nightgown on the patient. So I'm acting as an examiner right now. I look on my scale form and it says dress clients with affected weak right arm. This is what you would do, okay? Hi, Ms. Nafisa. My name is Cynthia. I'm going to be your CNA for today and I'm here to dress you. Is that okay with you? Great. Write this down, guys. The two equipments you will need here are the two shirts. Okay. You can also bring a bath blanket, which is a towel. Okay. For this particular skill, you are being tested on which arm comes out of the nightgown first and which shirt goes on the patient first, all right? So we're watching that. Okay. In order for you to successfully do this skill, you can also ask your patient, Ms. Nafisa, can you cross your right arm for me, please? Okay. When you're taking the shirt off, the good arm comes out of the nightgown first. Then the weak arm comes out next. Into the hamper. Okay. 
You also ask your patient, Miss Nafisa, these two shirts, which one would you prefer? <laughs> it's a step, okay? The patient is responsible for choosing the shirt they would like. But to put the shirt on, the weak arm goes in first, okay? You can ask your patient to sit down for you to make your skill easy, okay? Now, Ms. Nafisa, can you help me put this strong arm in the shape? We know the GNA exam is a little bit of a pretend exam. So you can button about three buttons you don't have to button the whole shirt if you think time may be against you, okay? Take your bath blanket. Do not throw the bath, uh, bath blanket in the hamper. Walk to the hamper. You want to do your best not to leave a lot of wrinkles in the shirt. So this is the next thing you will do. just so your work looks nice and neat, okay? <coughs> Ms. Nafisa, this is your call bell. If you need me, don't hesitate to call me. My bed is in the lowest position and I'm going to wash my hands, all right? That brings you to the completion of dress clients with affected weak right arm. The next skill that I'm gonna be doing is skill 10, feed clients who cannot feed self. It has 15 steps, okay? It also highlight uh, step three. Before feeding client, client is in an upright sitting position. That's the critical element. The equipment for this skill, you're gonna pick up your tray. You would also pick up the hand wipes. So let's write that down. We're gonna be testing you on all this, of course. So equipment, tray, hand wipes, and you would also need a babe in the form of a washcloth, all right? This is my GNA exam. I look on the skill form that the examiner has given me. There they are sitting there with their clipboard and watching me perform their skills, okay? Once you see feed the client, this is what you do. Hi, Miss Nafisa, my name is Cynthia, and I'm here to feed you. Is that okay with you? Another equipment you will need for this skill, which will be provided for you in the room, is a chair, okay? So you grab your chair, you have to sit, get your tray, get your bib, and you get your hand wipes, okay? If your next question is, Miss Cynthia, are you gonna be feeding the patient for real? The answer is yes, okay. Yes. For feeding, once again, the head of the bed has to be in the upright position, also known as high fowler's position. This is the only skill you get to sit throughout the GNA exam. It's required for you to sit to feed the patient. If we stand, we will have a problem. Once your patient is seated, if you feel the need to straighten the pillow, by all means, go ahead and do that, okay? The next thing you would do is to pick up this paper form here, okay, or card, and ask the patient to tell you their name. It's a step, all right? So can you please tell me your name? Nafisa. Thank you very much, Ms. Nafisa. I'm going to be feeding you this afternoon, but before we do that, can I have your hands? The candidate, that's you, you are responsible for washing the patient's hand with the hand wipes for them, okay? You said 
we don't throw things as nurse uh, members of the nursing team. You cover the patient with the bib. You have a seat. And earlier, I did tell you that the examiner is going to be giving you three different types of food. But in this case, for the purpose of the exam, it's basically two types of cereal and applesauce. But you can make it up, all right? So I'm just going to make up, you know, the type of foods I have here. Because it's required for you to describe the type of food you're going to be feeding the patient. And you should also ask the patient which one they will prefer first, all right? It's a step, okay? So Miss Nafisa, I have applesauce here. I have rice and I also have ground beef. Which one would you prefer first? Applesauce. Applesauce, good job. With each bite, you're supposed to tell the patient what you're giving them, all right? So this is your applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, if you are the patient, unless you are fasting, uh, you're supposed to eat the food, all right? That's why they use generic cereal, so people will not have allergies to it. This is your ground beef. That's the rice, actually. That's the rice. That's a lot. You have to chew fast and swallow. This is my GNA exam, okay? This is your rice. Oh. The first round, you also offer fluids in between. It's a requirement, all right? So this is your water. Good job. That's your rice. Crunchy rice. Apple sauce. Ground beef. Okay, so in my case, I was able to finish everything on the tray. And this is water for you. Okay. Once the patient is done, your next step is to take the babe and dab their mouth into the hamper. Then you also responsible for washing their hands again okay so you take their hand wipes just like when you finish eating you wash your hands same thing okay the examiner is going to designate a dirty utility area so wherever they've designated you would put the dirty tray there okay as far as the hand wipes i'm gonna just put it back on here can I give this to you? Yes, please. Okay. thank you you are supposed to leave the patient's head up in this position next thing after i've gotten rid of my tray Ms. Nafisa, this is your call bell. Don't hesitate to call me if you need me. My bed is in the lowest position and I'm going to wash my hands. All right, you are done with this skill. The next skill we have here, it says gives modified bed bath or face, one arm, hand and underarm. This is also a very comprehensive skill. It has 19 steps, all right? I'm gonna pretend I'm the examiner and I'm gonna set this skill up. Uh, again, so to set this skill up, your classmate is going to be having a nightgown on. Okay, so can you take your shirt off for me, please? Thank you. Um, acting as an examiner, write this down as far as your equipment for the skill is concerned. You're gonna have one basin. Three washcloths, I mean two washcloths, excuse me. Three towels. So. A pair of gloves. Mm. 
and then my gum. All right, in case you didn't get everything, just watch, you can write it again. So one basin, three towels, two washcloths, pair of gloves, soap, and a nightgown, okay. You're gonna put your equipment here, working station. I'm going out to get water. Every time you go out, the examiner comes with you. In this case, they're coming to make sure that I test the water, okay? You can stay put, I'll be right back. When you get to the hand washing station, you're going to test the water. That's why the examiner is here to see that you test the water before you get it. The water is not too hot or too cold. After you tested the water, this is not a step, but it would be a good idea for you to dry your hands so that gloves will fit easily. As you can tell, I have water in here. For all your washing skills, you could get about this much water, all right? And just like you saw, the examiner is not the one. I was holding the basin of water and I closed the door by myself, all right? So whether you just want to use your body to close the door, that's what you would use, okay? Close. If we forget to close the door, we've missed a step. For the purpose of teaching, I'm going to stand over there so everybody can see or else, you know, this is your GNA exam. You can perform the skill here or there. It doesn't really make a difference. Just try your best not to spill. My hand goes to me over here. Watch and learn. You're gonna put the bath blanket on the patient before you take the top sheets off, okay? Nice and neat. You can ask your patient to hold the bath blanket for you as well, all right? Just a piece. I'm gonna take your nightgown off. The skill says, Modified bare back or face, one arm, hand, and underarm, okay? So I'm just gonna be washing one side of her body. Not everything, the GNA exam is a timed exam, so I'm just gonna do exactly what's required of me. As you can tell, your patient is wearing scrubs so uh, especially ladies when you come to do your gna exam also wear an undershirt okay because you just don't know if you'll be a patient for someone and we certainly do not want you to be exposed but yes your classmate is going to wash your face for real even if we have makeup on, and they're gonna be washing your underarm for real as well, okay? So just know that. When we start washing the patient, we will not be using soap, okay? We're gonna wash the cleanest, from the cleanest to the dirtiest. And even when we are washing the eye, it requires a specific technique. You're gonna be washing from inner canthus to outer canthus, changing the site of the washcloth with each eye, okay? 
So watch and learn. You can ask your patient to close their eyes. Mr. Visa, can you close your eyes for me, please? Inner to outer. Change the sides of the washcloth. Inner to outer. Change the sides of the washcloth. And then you wash the entire face. Inner to outer, inner to outer, and wash the rest of the face. Okay, did not say neck, so we will not be doing the most. After all, you don't get extra credits by doing things that are not part of the exam. Now to dry, this area, I'm going to take the corner of a towel and we dab dry. Same technique, inner to outer. Change the sides of the towel, inner to outer. Change the sides of the towel, then I dry the rest of the face. As you can tell, I'm supporting her chin. It's not part of the exam, but it just also makes your job easy. Okay, now that I'm done washing the face, I'm going to be washing the arm, the hand, and the armpit. All right, so watch and learn. I wet my washcloth and I put soap on it. Okay, that's what the skill says. I'm going to be washing the fingers, then I wash the hand, then I wash the arm, and the last place I'll be washing is the armpit, right? Cleanest. So Wash the fingers for real. Don't put too much soap. I'm sure this person took a shower before they came for the exam. All right. So that you're not here forever. Rinsing the soap off. And then the armpit. Okay. For the purpose of teaching, if your question is me, Cynthia, how many times should we do this as far as the washing and the rinsing? My advice to you would be do it twice at least, okay? Wash the fingers in between the fingers, as you can tell, then the hand. You can open your washcloth so you get large areas of your client's body. And then I wash the armpit. Rinse, rinse the fingers, and rinse the armpits as well. To dry seam technique, dry the fingers first, the hand, and we are not rubbing, we are dabbing. And I dry the armpit. Into my hamper. Take the nightgown that I brought. We said as part of the healthcare team, when we are unfolding linen, we do not shake it. We unfold linen on top of the patient. So do not shake the nightgown to unfold it. This is good enough for the nightgown. Don't tie it in a hard knot. Now, I take my bath blanket off my client. Remember, this is one of the heaviest scales, like we said, okay? Miss Nafisa, this is your call light. 
If you need me, do not hesitate to call me. The examiner is still watching you. You are responsible for putting your dirty linen into the hamper in the examination room before you step out. If you step out with your dirty linen, you've made a mistake, all right? I'm going now to get rid of the water. The examiner will come with me. Rinse the basin and dry the basin. This is part of your steps. You can bring paper towels to dry the table. I know for sure I have water on the table and you will too. So when you're coming back, if you forget to bring paper towels, it's okay. You can just use a washcloth to dry the table. We said this is how we take gloves off. This is the hamper, not the trash bin. So I put my trash in here. And what do I tell the examiner? I'm going to wash my hands, okay? And I'm done with modified bed bath of one face, one hand, and under one, okay? The next demonstration I'm gonna be doing or performing is for urinary output. For urinary output, you're supposed to have a recording sheet with you when you get here, if you forget to bring your recording sheet, then by all means, when you get to the classroom, make sure you record, all right? So watch and learn. The examiner is responsible for setting the skills up for you, like we said earlier. So you meet uh, a measuring cup. You would also have bed pan with uh, urine in it and a commode and a box of gloves here. As soon as you get here, the examiner is watching you. You will glove up. Once you glove up, this is the next step. You're going to take your measuring cup over the commode and take your bed pan with the urine. When we are emptying urine out of a bed pan, we empty it from the side. So this is what you will do. Okay. Completely pour the urine into the measuring cup, then sit the measuring cup at eye level, squat to take the measurement of the urine. You do not tell the examiner what you are reading. You will simply keep it in your head till you finish and record. All right. This is your next step. Now rinse the measuring cup and pour it into your toilet. It's also a step for you to rinse the bed pan and empty it into the toilet. Once that's completed, you would take your gloves off and tell the examiner, I'm going to wash my hands before you record. All right, now you can follow me. Anytime you are entering a room with the examiner and your patient in the room, you will knock before you enter. Wait for the examiner to come in. Okay. And you close the door behind you. Before I continue, I'm going to record my urinary output in, on the recording sheet that was given to me. I got 550 cc's and hand my recording to the examiner. So I'll be doing scale 14, measures and record weights of an ambulatory client. This scale also have a critical element, which is 
uh, seven. It says that when you measure and you, you record your client's weight, it should either be the same as the examiner or plus or minus what? Two. Okay. So this is another measuring scale. Measure and record weight of an ambulatory uh, client. I've looked on my scale form. This is what I would do. Okay. I go to my client. Hi, Mr. Fisa. I'm here to weigh you. Is that okay with you? I'll be right back. Let's write this down. For weight, your equipment is the scale. Okay. When you get the scale, however, okay, whether you are using a standing scale, uh, this particular scale, bathroom scale, you are responsible for moving it from wherever the examiner has set the scale to zero. Okay, meaning you are responsible for balancing the scale. So before I start the scale, I'm going to pretend I'm the examiner. There is a wine here that the examiner is going to move, okay, to take the scale from balance to out of balance. When you bring your scale to weigh your patient, you're going to set the scale on the floor. If you have long nails, it would be difficult for you, all right? As you know, we're not supposed to have long nails anyway. When you are trying to balance your scale, you should not rest your other finger on the scale, okay? Or else you'll be here forever, okay? So you're doing it with one finger, basically. Another equipment you will need is you have to put the patient's shoes on. So just write shoes as well. So we have the scale. We have the patient's shoes as well. Now, when you finish, watch. So I've already told the patient what I'm going to be doing, right? And it's to weigh her. This is what you tell the examiner. I've locked the bed for safety and my bed is in the lowest position for safety as well, okay? Fun fold your tab sheet like we've been doing all along, okay? I'm just gonna take the night gown off. It's not part of the exam, but I just want you to see it clearly. Okay. I bring my patient's shoes here. Same technique as transferring the patient from bed to wheelchair, if we remember. Miss Nafisa, can you sit up for me? Thank you. Now I'm gonna bring you to the edge of the bed and I'd like for you to help me, okay? Good job. Then we're gonna put our shoes on. Just like transferring client from bed to wheelchair, if you remember. Now, can you scoot to the edge of the bed? So her feet touches the floor before you move her, okay? When we stand up, you're gonna get to the middle of the scale, all right? Wrap your hands around me, and on the count of three, we will stand up, all right? One, two, three. Okay. When your patient stands, you're going to support them behind the back and help them to the scale. Okay. Although this is your classmate, they're acting as a patient for you, so you have to support them as part of the scale. Let's walk to the scale. Okay. Once your client or your patient is on the scale, you're going to let go. Okay. The examiner is also going to come from her seat or his seat. Some of the examiners are male. Uh, and watch or look at the scale with you, all right? So I'm gonna squat here, do not bend here. Remember, you have only two pounds as a margin of error. If you do not squat so you can see clearly what your client's weight is, do we have a problem? Yes, if it's off, unfortunately, we will not make it. So you squat. Even if we have knee problems, you have to bend down uh, over here. And then I keep the results in my mind, okay? Help my patient off the scale. We're gonna walk back to the bed, okay? She took the shoes off for me. And as you are doing the exam with your classmates, because they know the skill, they may take their shoes off for you like she just did. But if they do, they have to make sure that their feet does not what? 
touch the ground, all right? So if you do that, please make sure your feet doesn't touch the ground or else the CNA will be penalized. Get rid of my equipment. Yes. Tell the examiner you are going to what? Wash your hands before you record, okay? It may seem like, oh, how am I going to remember it? But unfortunately, we have to, okay? So I tell the examiner I'm going to wash my hands and I'm under weight. I would put how much I got. LBS with the number that you got, okay? Miss Nafisa, this is your call light. The bed is in the lowest position. You are done with the scale, okay? You go on to your next scale. So our next scale over here, Fifteen performs modified passive range of motion for one knee and one ankle. Okay, everybody loves this skill. As you guys know, passive range of motion is very, very easy. All right, if you happen to have it, again, this is what you do. You go to your patient. Hi, Miss Nafisa. Now I'm here to exercise your knee and ankle. Is that okay with you? For this skill, there are no equipment needed. Okay, again, I'm gonna stand here so you can see. Now that I've gotten my patient's permission, fun fold the top sheet, okay? However, this skill has a critical element, although it's very easy. What's required of you is to flex the patient's leg at least how many times? Three times, okay? And dusty flex the foot three times as well. But before you start performing this skill for your patient, you're gonna give them instructions after you've turned the top linen down, okay? You tell your clients, Mr. Visa, whilst I'm exercising you, if you feel any pain, do not hesitate to tell me, okay? All right, we're gonna bend your knee, flex, straighten three times, and then your foot as well, okay? Another part of the critical element is you're not holding the joints on top. You are holding them what? Underneath, all right? Yes, if you need to stand, you can, as long as you're not blocking anybody. So again, watch. I support the knee and I support the ankle. If you do not support the ankle and you support the heel, do we have a problem? Yes, okay? So make sure the examiner clearly see where you are supporting, okay? That you're supporting the knee and the ankle, okay? Gently and slowly. That's what the critical element says. One. Two. Three. Now that I've done flexion and extension three times, I'm gonna do the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion also three times, all right? You're gonna still hold the ankle and you're gonna hold the foot, not the toes. You hold the foot and bring the foot to the head of the bed, one. To the foot of the bed, two. Two, three. You see, I kept her heels where on the mattress. All right, you're done. This is your call light, Miss Mafisa. My bed is in the lowest position, and I'm going to wash my hands all right then you go to your next scale over here so skill 16 it says perform passive range of motion for one shoulder this also has a critical element the critical element is step four and step five okay so watch and learn go to my patient again hi mr Nafisa. i'm here to perform passive range of motion for your one shoulder. Is that okay with you? Great. You don't need any equipment for range of motion for one shoulder. This is what you would do. 
Mr. Fisa, whilst I'm performing this skill, if you feel any pain, please let me know, okay? For passive range of motion, you would support the elbow and the wrist. When I finish this skill, by the way, we will take a break, okay? Support the elbow like this, not like that, okay? So this is where you are supporting. The skill says I should flex it at least to the patient's ear, okay? and straighten it back on the mattress three times and take away from her body and bring it back to her body three times. So that's what I will be doing, okay? So let's watch. Straighten arm. Um, one. Two. Three, then take away and add it back. One, two, three, Mr. Visa. This is your call bell. My bed is in the lowest position, and I'm going to wash my hands. Then you're done. All right. So the next skill we're going to be doing is position on the side. For this skill, write these equipment down, please. Position on the side is another very easy skill. The equipment you will need for this skill is three pillows. All right, so let's write it down. This is my GME exam. I will shut the door for privacy. I go to my skill form and the skills form says, position clients on the side, this is what you would do. Ms. Nafisa, I'm here again to position you on the side. Is that okay with you? I'll be right back. Then you go to your cart and you get the three pillows. Once you bring your three pillows, lock the door for safety. My bed is in the lowest position for safety. The next thing you have to say and do to get credit is to tell the examiner you are bringing the head of the bed down. You have to say that to get credit. Once you've brought the head of the bed down, you would, now you don't have to write anything, you would bring the rail on the opposite side of where you'll be turning your patient. Okay, watch and learn. You turn the top sheet to the foot of the bed, okay? Then you can ask your patient, Mr. Fisa, can you move a little bit towards me, okay? Okay. And we're gonna be turning, you give your patient this is instructions. We're gonna be turning facing the wall and I'll need your help, okay? So turn for me. Good job. Once your patient is turned on their side, the next thing, support their neck and fix the pillow underneath their head. The next thing you will do is to support their upper arm between the elbow and their body. You put as another pillow, okay? Then between their legs, in between the knee, you put another pillow and flex the upper leg. The third pillow for position the clients on the side goes to the back of your patient so they do not roll back onto their backs. After you've positioned your three pillows, bring the rail down and the hand that is facing the wall you will lift the hand up so that the hand is resting on the pillow and the patient is not lying on their hand. It's a step. Cover your patient neatly. And because my patient is now facing the wall, 
I take my call light and bring it to the patient. Miss Nafisa, I'm gonna put your call lights here. If you need me, do not hesitate to call me, okay? My bed is in the lowest position. Call light is within reach and I'm going to wash my hands, okay? The other scale on Miss Susie, let's all go to that scale, which is fully catheter, okay? Catheter care, okay? So for catheter care, if you see perineal care, catheter care is very easy to accomplish as well, all right? So there I am. This is my GNE exam, and I have catheter care. You go to Miss Susie once again. Hi, Miss Susie. My name is Cindy, and I'm here to perform catheter care on you. Write this down as your equipment, okay? One basin. Two washcloths, two towels, pair of gloves, soap again, and chuck. I'm going to get water and the examiner is coming with me. your water back, ask your patient to test the water once again. So you see the similarities between perineal care and catheter care. They are almost identical. Remember, I already told my patient what I'm going to be doing. chuck under a patient you fold it into half okay? so that by the time it gets to the other side half of your pad will be there and half will be towards you same thing except now I'm gonna be washing the catheter, okay? That's what you are being tested on for this scale, and it has a critical element. Okay, my soap, once again, after I've wet my washcloth, change the sides of the washcloth, and when it comes to the middle this time, I would hold the catheter and wash away from the perineum, okay? This is what you're being tested on, about four inches away from the perineum, okay? Same thing with rinsing. Front to back, change the site of the washcloth front to back, and then in the middle, you hold it in place and away. Not all the way down here, 
only about four centimeters, okay? Just like that, okay? When you're done, this scale, however, does not include for you to wash the batters, okay? Dab, dab, dab. Change the size of the towel. And then we do what? Dry away as well, holding the catheter. The chuck is considered what? Dirty. As you can tell, when I'm covering the patient, I leave the bath blanket in place, okay? <coughs> Cover the patient with the top blanket. Then, you remove your bath blanket. Same thing. The chuck is disposable into the trash bin, not the hamper. Going out, wash or rinse and dry. Paper towels once again. Clean your over a table. I'm going to wash my hands. Call light is within reach. My bed is in the lowest position and I'm going to wash my hands. You are done with this skill, okay? Page 34. Provides for care on one foot. One. Okay. Hi, Mr. Pisa. I'm here to provide foot care on one foot for you. Is that okay with you? I'll be right back. Write this down, guys. For foot care, these are your equipment. Two basins, two washcloths, three towels, a pair of gloves, soap, and lotion, okay? Those are your equipment. I'm going out to get water, okay? The examiner will be coming with me, okay? Actually, you know what? Just bring one basin instead of two basins. So I'm gonna put one basin back, okay? When you get here, He's responsible for testing the water. Make sure it's not going to be too hot or too cold for your patient. And like we said earlier, every time you test the water, just dry your hands so that gloves can fit on your hands easily. You get about this much water once again. You go in and the examiner is coming with you. Responsible for shutting the door behind you. When you come back, ask your client to test the water. Can you please test the water? Of 
put hair. I'm gonna once again bring the client's head up to a sitting position. Okay. I just want you to see the button that I'm using. The head of the bed button is what I'm using. So when you get to a sitting position. perform this scaling bed so you have to be very mindful that you do not spill the water in bed okay cover the foot so you're gonna be washing and putting roll your patience Can you lift your foot up and put it in the basin for me? wet your washcloth, then you get your soap. You're gonna wash the entire foot in between the toes for the examiner to see that you're going between the toes. It says the foot. Do not do extra by washing the leg. After washing, I rinse the entire foot. Obviously, this is not easy for your clients at all, as far as bending their foot up to this level, or leg up. Drying. We said we do not rub, we dub, okay? So also go between the toes and dry the entire foot. Let the examiner see that you're drying the entire foot, okay? This is what I was doing. Once you've washed and rinsed the entire foot and dried the entire foot, the next thing you do is to lotion. It's a step. To lotion, uh, lotion the client's foot, you don't put the lotion directly on the foot. You warm it in your palm. It's a step. Then you lotion the entire foot, the bottom of the foot. You do not lotion between the toes. If you get lotion, we said that for the GNA exam, sometimes we're a little bit nervous, which is all normal. You see here, I have too much lotion, for instance. You would not just stay here. After all, we just said that it's a timed exam, trying to blow on this or trying to massage your classmate's foot. You will simply put the lotion on and get the towel you use to dry the foot and dab the excess lotion off. Okay, that's what the scale says. You can dab it off. That's if you have excess lotion. If you don't, then you don't have to do that. Once you are done, remove your towel. Yes, with your glove hand, return your patient. 
back to the lying position. Same thing we did concerning all our washing scales, okay? You do not take the linen outside of the examination room. Return your equipment where you found it. You're going out, which I will show you this part of the scale later. You're going out, you're gonna get rid of your dirty water. You're responsible for rinsing the basin and drying the basin, then you leave it at the designated dirty area. Okay, so the Zanda comes with me. When you get here, pour the water into the basin into the sink rather, excuse me, dry the basin and bring extra paper towel. Excuse me. Call light is within reach. Call light is within reach. My bed is in the lowest position and I'm going to wash my hands, all right? Then you've completed our foot care. The next skill we have here, go to page 35. Provides mouth care, skill 20. Skill 20 has a critical element. The critical element says, uh, step eight, cleans mouth, including tongue, and all surfaces of teeth using a gentle motion. All right, so watch and learn. This is my GNA exam. I go to my patient once again. Hi, Ms. Nafisa, I'm here to brush your teeth. Is that okay with you? I'll be right back. For this skill, these are your equipment. You're gonna get an emesis basin, you're gonna get a washcloth, which will be acting as your bib. You're gonna get toothbrush, toothpaste, and a cup of water, okay? The water is provided for you over here, so you just get your cup and get put some water in it. You would also need a pair of gloves. If your question is, am I gonna wash the client's teeth for real? The answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> for mouth care, the head of the bed comes up again. I'm going to be standing by the wall so that everybody can see this. Just like I said, mouth care has a critical element. The critical element says you're going to brush all the surfaces of the teeth and you're also going to brush the tongue. You might miss it. It also says do this gently. That's why I was emphasizing. Almost like uh, range of motion for knee and ankle and range of motion for one shoulder. The critical element says gently. So if you do it too fast, do we have a problem? Yes. yes, all right? Because if you remember at the beginning of the skill demonstration, I told you, you have to do a critical element for a skill that has one. And you also have to do the critical elements correctly. Just because you perform the critical element doesn't mean you get credit for it if you do it incorrectly, all right? So watch and learn once again. 
put the babe on my patient over here. Glove up. You don't have to write any of this because you're just watching me. Okay, everything is demonstrated. When you are taking the toothbrush out of the sleeve, the plastic sleeve, okay, don't touch the bristles. This is going into somebody's mouth, so you can just pierce it with the toothbrush itself, okay? Before you put toothpaste on the toothbrush, you would wet the toothbrush. This patient over here did brush their teeth before they came, right? Your classmate. So don't put too much toothpaste on the toothbrush or else you'll be here forever. Rinse in it. And we want to finish our GNA exam on time. Okay. Once you put the toothpaste on your toothbrush, you are going to be holding the emesis basin, also known as a kidney bowl. Okay. Also known as a spit bowl close to your patient's lips and you're going to give your patient instructions so that you will pass this successfully. None of us have perfect teeth. So if you are a patient for someone and they ask you to open your mouth for them, please do. Don't just sit there and do this and then the person fails the exam all because of you, all right? The first instructions I'm going to give my patient is Miss Nafisa, can you do cheese for me? Okay. So this is what you would do. Gently. Of course, I'm speaking because I'm teaching. You will be doing these skills quietly. Now do uh open your mouth. Very good. So when your classmate tells you to do, uh, don't bring your tongue out. Just open your mouth, you brush the lower enamel, then you brush the top, okay? Now, can you please bring your tongue out, stick your tongue out? When they ask you to bring your tongue out and you stick your tongue out, you, the CNA, will just brush the lower part. Don't go all the way to their throat. Obviously, or else they will guard, right? Okay. You're done. You did the critical elements correctly. Once I finish brushing the tongue, I'm going to ask her to rinse and bend her head down and spit in the kidney basin. I'm holding, Officer, hold the water. I'm holding the toothbrush on the side here, okay? So you can use that trick. I'm gonna do this so you can see. So be a great patient for each other in this manner. Thank you. After she's spat, I'm gonna use the washcloth to dry her lips, not rubbing, but what? Dabbing, okay? Very good. We are CNAs on the nursing team. You know this is what we do. Okay, so this is not a problem. When you finish, this is considered disposable. The examiner is going to dispose of the toothbrush, okay? But you would put this into the trash bin, the washcloth into the hamper. I'm gonna go to the sink, which I will show you later when the recording is over and rinse this and rinse the toothbrush as well. For now, you don't have to come with me, okay? But that day, the examiner will come with you. When you get here, just pour the contents of your spit bowl into the sink, rinse it, and rinse the toothbrush as well. Dry the emesis basin. to wash my hands, you go back to the examination room and the examiner follows you. When I come back, as you see, the examiner has designated an area outside of the classroom 
that he or she has determined as the dirty utility area. So any equipment that you take out to wash and rinse and dry, you leave it at the designated dirty area, all right? That's why I'm not coming back with any of the equipment, okay? Get rid of my toothpaste, a paste, like we said, you should put it back where you found it. If I have speck of water on my table, I can clean it with paper towel or washcloth. I return my patient back how I found them, okay? In the lying position. So some of these skills, obviously, you can also practice at home. If you have family members who can allow you, but you are still supposed to come to school to practice so you can take command of the environment. Okay, the more you practice here, the more you'll be used to the equipment and the environment. So that day, we will not be too nervous, all right? The next skill we're going to be doing is perineal care, all right? Perineal care is a skill that we do all the time as healthcare professionals. It also happens to be a very tasking skill. Why? Because the steps are long. So watch and learn. Miss Susie is considered a human being. So all our pre skills and our post skills will be in effect over here. All right. So I shut the door for privacy. I go to Miss Susie and this is what I will say. Hi, Miss Susie. My name is Cynthia. I'm going to be your CNA for today. And I'm here to wash your perineum. We all know that perineal care can be a little bit fancy. You are not being graded on using fancy words, so you can say it in your own words. I'm here to change your uh, pass, or I'm here to wash your genitals. I'm here to wash in between your legs. It means the same thing, okay? Don't stress yourself out. Write this down as for your equipment for perineal care, okay? One basin. Uh, we're gonna have two towels, two washcloths. You know, every time we get in water, we are also gonna use gloves. Then we have soap, and we also have uh, pads. Okay, these chucks. Chucks. It's also part of the equipment. I'm going out to get water as usual. Every time you see the basin, you know what's about to happen. The examiner is gonna come out with me to make sure that I test the water, all right? So again, stay put. I will be right back. Get here just like our other perineal care washing skills. I'm gonna test the water, then I will fetch it. Dry your hands like we've been saying all along. When you've got in about this much water, okay, this should be good enough. Wait for the examiner to come in and you provide privacy. When you bring your water back, you ask your clients to test the water. Miss Susie, can you please test the water? Again, I'm gonna demonstrate the scale by the wall so everybody can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna move my equipment close to me. my bath blanket on my patient to provide privacy and I turn the top sheet down to the foot of the bed. Okay. 
I'm going to bring this bed to a comfortable level for me. And when I finish, I would have to return it to the lowest position. The next thing you will do before you start washing um, Miss Susie's genitals is for you to put the chuck underneath her, okay? You can use different techniques to do this. As you know, Miss Susie is very heavy. Personally, I'm just gonna lift her turn her towards me and unfold the chuck. Okay. The more you practice on her, you would get used to her. Okay. You know our patients and residents in real life comes in different sizes, so uh, she's kind of heavy, but we should be used to that. Okay. You would only expose the area that you're going to be washing, which is the genitals. Miss Susie also happened to have a critical element, and the critical element for this scale is for you to correctly wash her genital area. We said for the female genitalia, we're washing from front to back, changing the site of the washcloth with each wipe mm -hmm. okay we don't go from the anus up we go from front to back also known as cleanest to dirtiest all right so that's what i would be doing i would wash wet my washcloth have soap a little bit of soap okay if you want to make a mix out of your washcloth you can definitely do that okay so I'm going from front to back one side the side is considered clean front to back on the other side then I do the middle front to back okay when I finish washing I'm going to rinse Or rinsing, same thing. Front to back, front to back, changing the sides of the washcloth, okay, and front to back. When I finish washing and rinsing, now I dry, taking the side or the corners of your towel, we do not rub the perineum, we use a dabbing motion because the skin there is sensitive, okay? Turn the side, another side to your towel and dry dabbing front to back. Now the middle, front to back, okay? Not that bad, okay? Once I finish, now I have to wash the buttocks, okay? To wash the buttocks, same thing. I'm going to take my soap on my washcloth, excuse me, and I do front to back for the buttocks. Front to back. So do one cheek, another cheek. And then the last place we do is the middle, okay? Now, rinsing. Rinse one cheek of the buttocks, the other cheek of the buttocks, and you rinse the middle, okay? You want to rinse again because you feel like there is still soap, you can by all means do that by using the same technique. If you realize that you've made a mistake, let's say I'm doing front to back and for some reason, 
I find myself going back and forth. For each GNA scale, you can make one mistake and correct yourself. When you make a mistake, you don't tell the examiner, oops, you don't tell the examiner, I'm sorry. You simply tell the examiner, I've made a mistake and correct yourself from the point where you made the mistake. You don't start from the beginning of the scale, all right? So for instance, if I'm doing Miss Susie, I was doing everything correctly, but then I get here and I start doing this, I'll tell the examiner, I've made a mistake. I should have been washing or rinsing from the front to the back, okay? You don't start from the beginning, you just correct yourself. One mistake per skill, okay, to correct. Now that I'm done washing and rinsing, I'm gonna dry, same thing, dab, up, okay, front to back. Now the middle part of the buttocks will be last, okay. When you're done with that, this chap, this pad is considered dirty. So now you have to remove it, it's part of the steps. That's how you end up with 19 steps for perineal hair. You fold it onto itself. Cover her. Then you take the back blanket off. We said, if we take linen out of the examination room, we've made a mistake, okay? So you get rid of your linen, your dirty linen, that is. Your chuck is going into the trash bin. You're going out to empty the contents of this basin into the sink. You will rinse and dry and store it at the dirty utility area and then come back, all right? So I'm going out, the examiner comes with me. Empty the contents into the sink. Rinse the basin. Dry the basin and store it at the dirty utility area. Excuse me. You take paper towels back into the examination room. Also say that if you do not bring paper towels, you can by all means use washcloths to dry the table. Okay. Miss Susie, this is your call light. My bed is in the lowest position, and I'm going to wash my hands. Okay. This is my GNA exam, okay? I go to my patient. Mr. Nafisa, I'm here to transfer you from bed to wheelchair. Is that okay with you? I'll be right back, all right? So the examiner will have a wheelchair for you in the room. You get your wheelchair. The next equipment I said I will need is what? A gate belt, also known as a transfer belt, all right? So I bring that with me. When you bring uh, your wheelchair when you want to separate a wheelchair you simply or have a wheelchair ready when it's folded you 
This skill, we also said, has two critical elements. One of the critical elements says before the patient gets in the wheelchair, you need to lock the wheels of the wheelchair, all right? The examiner is watching me. They're not speaking to me. Another thing that we need uh, to do when we are using a wheelchair is to fold the foot rest. So if the foot rest is not folded, okay, you are responsible for what? Folding it, okay? The next thing we will do, which is part of the critical element, is for you to tell the examiner you would lock the wheels of the bed, all right? All what I'm doing, everything that I'm doing is part of the what? Steps. That's how we got to 15 or 14 steps for this particular skill. This is the next thing I would do, okay? Fun fold the top sheets of the linen of your patient, okay? We also said we need the patient's shoes. So I'm gonna be using the bedroom slippers, okay? I tell the examiner, I've already told the examiner, my bed is locked in position and my bed is also in the lowest position for safety. This is how we transfer patients when we are moving them from bed. You're gonna support the patient's abdomen, support the upper. Miss Nafisa, can you please help me sit up, okay? Sit you up. Then you go behind their knee and transition them. Please come to the edge of the bed. As you see in me, when you start the exam, the examiner is gonna tell you the patient is alert and oriented. So you can give them instructions to help you and they would, all right? Once your patient is in this position, without the, their feet touching the ground, all right? The next thing you would do is to put the, apply the gates belt on the patient. If you think your patient is too tall and their feet might touch the ground, you can ask them to scoot back. So actually, I'm gonna pretend she's too tall and her feet will touch the ground. I'll give her instructions. Mr. Fisa, can you move back? So you very good, all right? To apply a gate belt, we said when we put a gate belt on a patient or a resident, it needs to be snugly, not too loose and not too what, tight, all right? So you put your palm your open palm in between the patient's body and the belt so that it's not too tight or too loose and just simply adjust it. The SS belt should always be tucked in, all right? Now that I have my gates belt on the patient, I'm going to put the shoes on the patient. Okay. Now I'll ask my patient to scoop to the edge of the bed now. Mr. Fisa, okay. Now scoop to the edge so that your feet touches the ground. If the patient's feet does not touch the ground before you move them, we've made a mistake, guys, all right? So make sure that the feet touches the ground. I'll bring my wheelchair a little bit close so we are not walking too far, all right? Now this is the next thing you do. You're gonna support the patient's knees with yours. Ask your patient to wrap their hands around you and tell the patient, give the patient a cue, okay? Miss Nafisa, on the count of three, we will stand, all right? One, two, three. Stand up, please. Very good. Now we're gonna pivot, walk to the wheelchair and sit down for me. Good job. That's how you should sit your patient in the wheelchair. Once your patient is in the wheelchair, your next step is to go behind them like this and not like that in the gate belt, all right? Fingers up and bring their hip to the back of the wheelchair. It's a step. The examiner is watching you. Bring the patient's foot on the footrest. Okay. Let's see. 
Miss Nafisa, this is your call bell. If you need me, do not hesitate to call me and I'm going to wash my hands, okay? You've done or you've completed this skill. All right, you can stand up for me now, please. The last skill concerning a human being that I'll be demonstrating for you is blood pressure, okay? So go to page 38. So blood pressure is also part of our recording skill. Write this down, the equipment you need in order to perform this skill for the examiner. You're gonna need a blood pressure cuff. You're gonna need a stethoscope, which will be provided for you. So you don't have to bring your own because you are using the examiner's stethoscope, the double lumen stethoscope, the day of the GNA exam, all right? So blood pressure cuff, like we said, the stethoscope, all this will be here for you when you come in. Cotton balls and alcohol, okay, are equipment as well, so write that down. Sometimes when I'm testing students for GNE, uh, when it gets to blood pressure, they bring the clock. The clock is only, the clock with the second hand is only for pulse and what? Respiration, all right, so do not get those things confused. This is my exam. I've looked on my exam form and it says measure and record blood pressure. This is what you do once again. Hi, Ms. Nafisa, I'm here to take your blood pressure. Is that okay with you? Great. I have my equipment here and the examiner will get up from their seats and come to the bedside of the patient to do the skill with me, okay? But before I go any further, let me, uh, again, although I know your instructors taught you this, when you take a, a stethoscope, we said this is the diaphragm. This is the part that you're going to be placing on the brachial artery, okay? So you're going to disinfect the diaphragm, and you would also disinfect the two ear pieces. It's not the examiner's responsibility to disinfect the ear pieces. You would disinfect it and hand one to her and keep one as well, okay? Of course, this is a blood pressure cuff. We all know what a blood pressure cuff looks like. And when you take the blood pressure cuff, okay, we said this area is also very important. It's guiding you as to where, you know, you might place your, the diaphragm of your stethoscope. It has Velcro. You always want to make sure that when you wrap the cuff, this area is facing you, okay? In order for you to hear the patient's blood pressure, you have to wrap the cuff correctly, okay? You also have this part of the uh, blood pressure cuff. So on this area of your cuff, there are numbers here and there are lines here. Each line represents something. Each line, little tiny line, represents two, okay? Whereas on your scale, each little line represents one. Okay, and then you would have a dark line that represents a 10. Okay, and then we have the bulb here and you have this dial here as well. Most of you have the blood pressure equipment. You bought it, you purchased it to practice with it. The more you practice, the easier it would become. Blood pressure, pulse, and respiration are acquired skills. You can't just do it once and say, oh, great, I know how to do it. The more you do it, the better you will become, all right? So watch and learn. Okay. Now I'm gonna pretend I'm you. Like we said, you will not be speaking. You just come here, the examiner is up. You disinfect the diaphragm of your stethoscope. Then you disinfect the two ear pieces for you and the examiner, okay? When you get in your alcohol, try your best not to soak the cotton ball with too much alcohol. If that's the case, then I would advise for you to squeeze it out or else your ears may start, you know, getting irritated. Right. So again, I'm going to stand here so you can see it. Actually, so that everybody has a perfect view. 
I will return my equipment in a bag. Just move this out of the way as well. We already learned from our lectures that when you're taking blood pressure, the patient's arm should be exposed. In this case, it's very easy unless your classmate is wearing, you know, uh, a sweater underneath their uniform the day of the exam, you should be okay. But if they are wearing a sweater, then you would move it out of the way to expose the upper arm, thus exposing the brachial artery, okay? So that's what you're doing. Take my cuff and wrap it snugly. Remember that word, right? So this is what I'm doing, snugly. Sometimes, again, when I'm testing students and they wrap the cuff and it's a tiny, tiny bit loose, they get all, you know, bent out of shape, trying to take it off, I'd wrap it again. You know, just do this. And the more you practice, the better you become, like I just said, all right? Just like that. And it's facing you, okay? You rest the patient's arm on the mattress. We said this part is what's going in, in contact with the brachial artery. So certainly you do not want to cover the brachial artery. Another thing that I would advise you to do, especially when it comes to blood pressure, we do not want to get this wrong, okay? We did not come this far, thank you, to fail our GNA exam. So if you think, oh, my back is going to hurt, I'm really going to be stressed, or oh, I'll be putting too much stress on my back, then by all means, you can bring the bed to a comfortable level for you so you're not all the way down here. But if you do that, then when you finish, you have to return it to the lowest position for real. Take my earpiece, hand this to the examiner. Can I do it with you, please? Okay, I just want you to get a full picture, but you can be here. Like this is my examiner, that's how it's gonna look, okay? You do this. They are just here to listen with you. They're not doing any of the steps, okay? You place your hand at the brachial artery. Can you come down a bit, please? Okay. And you place this part on your client's chest so you and the examiner can see, okay? So I'm the student, I'm doing everything. She's just going to watch and listen. Because we do not know each other's, excuse me, because we do not know each other's blood pressure, you were taught to pump the blood pressure cuff all the way to 180, mm -hmm. okay? Then you start coming down. My client in this case is very young, so her blood pressure is very low. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. So once I'm done, I keep the number in my mind. Okay, so you do the same thing without saying anything to the examiner. I unwrap the cuff, return my equipment where I had it from quietly, not speaking to the examiner concerning my numbers. In my mind, okay, call lights. I brought the bed all the way up, so I had to return it to the lowest position for real in order to get credit for it. Oh, 
all light is within reach. My bed is in the lowest position and I'm going to wash my hands. Then I go to my recording sheet and where it says blood pressure, once again, I would record. I got 90 over 60. Okay, no letters behind it. I just write it down and I give it to my patient. I mean, my examiner. You are done with the blood pressure. Okay. All right. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you for your time.